हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू अनूज क्लास रूम सो वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अ लॉट अबाउट बी ओ पी थ्रू आउट एम एम पी सी थ्री राइट विच इज़ इन शॉर्ट फॉर बैलेंस ऑफ पेमेंट्स सो वी स्पोक अबाउट हाउ द इम्बैलेंस इन बी ओ पी इज़ नॉट गुड इवन इन द लास्ट सेशन दैट इज़ यूनिट टेन ऑल्सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेम वाई आई एम एफ इज देयर वाई वर्ल्ड बैंक इज देयर इट इज ऑल टू रेक्टिफाई दिस बी ओ पी इशू सो इग्नो हैज thankfully dedicated a whole unit in our block for to help us understand about this bop okay so this session again is a very humble attempt from anus classroom to help you to get the main concepts and the idea behind this balance of payments that is discussed in unit 11 of our mmpc 3 course so let's get started so by the end of this unit i hope that you will gain an understanding about the concept of balance of payment of a country and the major components of this bop we will also talk about the importance of bop for an economy and also about the balance of payment of india india's bop at present okay so since there is a lot to talk about i don't want you to bore you into sleep with a very long video what we will do is we will split split this unit into two parts this is the first part we will discuss a few of these concepts in this session and the remaining we will have another part to video and with these two parts we will try to complete this whole unit 11 okay so what is balance of payments bop bop for a country can be defined as a systematic record of all the transactions between the economic units of this one country like households firms and all, and the government and all and the rest of the world in any given period of time so it will include all the transaction records that are made among the individuals corporates as well as the government and will help in keeping the flow of funds in track to develop the economy as a whole this bop is what you can say the sole integral determinant determinant of the health of the economy of any country as well as its relationships globally it portrays the overall transactions of an economy with the other global economies during a given time period in a systematic and prudent manner so the importance of bop of a country is that bop will reflect the financial and economic status of a country bop can act as an indicator to determine whether a country's value of currency is appreciating or depreciating bop statements also help the government in making decisions on their fiscal as well as trade policies bop statements can provide vital insights into the economic dealings of the country with the rest of the world if you closely study the bop statement of a country as well as its components it will help in identifying the trends which might be beneficial or harmful for the economy and thus will help in making uh, taking appropriate economic measures there are two main components of balance of payment that is current account and capital account this is very important balance of payments is an important concept so i hope you guys are paying attention here the current account in bop it comprises of transactions in goods and services alongside transfers during the current time period okay current account goods services and transfers during the current time period that is transfers and earning whereas capital account will record all transactions in assets asset means it could it could include any one of the type in which wealth can be held it could be stocks bonds government debts loans anything right purchase of an asset records will, will record a deduction in the capital account but sale definitely will have a increase in the capital account so if an indian is purchasing a us car company okay money is going out right indian is purchasing us car company then capital account of our bop it will be a debt for india as the indian has to pay in dollars which means foreign exchange is going out of india so it is a debit but if it is a sale of asset for instance like a, a us company someone from us a us customer is purchasing a share of the indian company then what will happen it is a record it's recorded as a surplus in india's capital account why foreign reserves are now coming to india so it is like a credit okay sale of asset will increase foreign exchange of the country so taking the two accounts together balance of payments or bop can be summed up as sum of the current account and capital account so bop is in surplus okay that is bop deficit if both countries both the current and capital account combined has a surplus okay or a deficit so bop is in surplus or in deficit if 
both current account and capital account. When they, we combine the current account and capital account, still if it is surplus means BOP is surplus. If it is deficit means it is deficit. If current account or capital account will cancel it, cancel out each other, then balance of payments is, up, is said to be in equilibrium. Okay, so thus a deficit in the current or capital account alone doesn't lead to a BOP deficit or BOP surplus. It has to be, it is the combined effect of both of these accounts. So it has to be outweighted by a very large surplus in the, suppose say there is a um, surplus in the current account, it has to, if there is equal, uh, what you can say, deficit in capital account, it will be cancelled out, correct? So it is very important to keep this basic rule of BOP accounting in mind, which is what we are going to look at now, right? So what is this basic BOP accounting rule? It can be stated as all transactions leading to net receipt of foreign exchange will create a credit, okay? That is surplus. If foreign exchange is coming to us, it is surplus credit, okay? In the corresponding account. Whereas, if the transaction is leading to a net payment of for, uh, to foreign countries, that is foreign reserves going out from us, then it is a debit, it is a deficit in the corresponding account. So this is the basic BOP accounting rule. When the value of exports for a country will exceed its imports, then what will happen? It accumulates more of foreign exchange leading to current account surplus for the country. Similarly, if sale of domestic bonds or to foreign countries, that is borrowing from a foreign country will ex exceed the purchase of foreign bonds leading to for, uh, uh, lending to a foreign country, then there will be a capital account surplus for the domestic country. A foreign loan repayment, however, is recorded as a debit in the capital account. Why? Because it involves outflow of payments in the foreign currency. A deficit or a surplus in the capital account will be is termed as net capital outflow. Okay, if it is a deficit, it is a net capital outflow. If it is a surplus, it is a net capital inflow. A current account deficit in any country is necessarily being offset by capital account surplus in the country. Usually, that is how it happens. So, the BOP accounting follows the system of double entry bookkeeping. According to the system of double entry bookkeeping, BOP should always balance in principle where the total value of credit records should be equal to the total value of the debit records. But this does not ever happen in practice. Why? Because of proper unavailability of recorded data. So what will happen? A record for errors and omissions are also included to make the overall balance of payments zero. Okay, so that is how BOP accounting is done. So now that we know what this balance of payment means and how it works, let us try to understand what it means to have balance of payment of a country in equilibrium. Why? Because that is what all country is aiming. If it is in deficit, surplus is fine. If it is a deficit, then definitely we have a problem, correct? So a country can have its BOP in equilibrium only when the demand for its foreign exchange reserve equals the supply of foreign exchange. That is, both inflow and outflow of foreign exchanges from the country are equal. So, if, the, if you are giving $10 outside, you are also getting $10 worth inside means it is in balance, it is in equilibrium. If a country's inflow of foreign exchange exceeds its out, outflow, then it is said to have a favorable balance of payment or BOP surplus. That is, we are getting more foreign exchange than we are sending out means it is good for us. Right? Similarly, if the country's inflow of foreign exchange is exceeded by its outflow, it is said to have an If the country's inflow of foreign exchange is exceeded by its outflow, that is, outflow is more than inflow, it is said to have an unfavorable BOP, that is BOP deficit. So if you are getting more than what you are spending, it is good for you, it is surplus. If you are spending more than what you are getting, then it is bad for you, it is deficit. Simple, simple in layman terms, okay. So if BOP moves against the country, necessary adjustments have to be made to improve the sale by encouraging more exports both in goods as well as services and less imports. Again, a favorable BOP of an economy may lead to encouraging imports for both goods and services, purchase of foreign assets or granting of foreign aid to other countries also in need. So, a country can never have a permanent favorable or unfavorable BOP. It always tries to balance it out, okay. The market forces tend to be in such a way that it balances it out. So, what needs to be maintained is that total liabilities and total assets as of individual countries must balance out in the long term. 
in the short term if it is deficit it is surplus doesn't matter but in the long term it has to balance out that is what is more important so an equilibrium in the bop is thus an indicator of a very sound economy if there is disequilibrium in the bop is a short term phenomenon it is balanced out by supply and demand of foreign reserves possessed by a economy so with this i think we can wind up this session okay so this unit is far from over definitely but i hope this session was useful to you in understanding about bop i will see you all in the next session where, where we will take this discussion on bop to a conclusion we will wind up this unit 11 all the important topics so until i see you there thank you so much take care bye bye